Last week, we toured the famous Herring Hotel in Amarillo, Texas, one of the three largest hotels in the state. It's been closed down for many decades, but just down the road is another famous tourist attraction in Amarillo that's been open and is still going strong to this very day. Today, we're going to have a steak at the Big Texan Steakhouse in Amarillo, and then head south near Galveston to the Bolivar Peninsula to climb the Bolivar Lighthouse all the way to the top. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. Texas to explore an old hotel, but it's hard to travel through this town without stopping at the Big Texan Steakhouse. The Big Texan is the stuff of legend. Originally, it was built on Route 66 and later moved to Interstate 40. Get within 100 miles of Amarillo and you'll start seeing signs advertising a free 72-ounce steak. Of course, there's a catch, and that's what makes the Big Texan a legend. Bob Lee is a tall Texan and a fixture of the Big Texan. He and his brother inherited the steakhouse from their father, and he tells us the story. My dad opened the Big Texan in 1960 on Route 66, and the reason he opened it there is because that was the mainstay of Amarillo, and that was where all the business was at the time. In 1968, I-40 opened, and it bypassed Route 66. The next day, my father's business went to zero, and he had 800 kids and had to make a move, and he found some land on I-40, and the next next move was real evident what happened. He was smart enough to sit back and let the cowboys that worked next door at the stockyards come into the Big Texan, have fun, have their personality show, and he put them at the very center table and sat back and let the tourists watch and have fun with them because they would always try to outdo each other. The same cowboys that sat at the table bragging about how much they could eat, how big their muscles were, how fast they could drink a beer, were the reasons that my father decided to do a steak challenge. And what he did, he told 12 cowboys, next Friday, you guys come in here, we're going to put $5 in my hat, and we're going to start serving you guys one pound steaks over an hour period of time. And whoever eats the most one pound steaks gets some money in the hat. So he started the contest, and one cowboy ate one steak, another one, another one, and then he was on his fourth one, which was four pounds of steaks. And he said, well, give me a salad, and give me one of those baked potatoes, give me one of those shrimp cocktails, and give me some bread. Just, just to annoy the other ones, and he ate that, and then he asked for his fifth steak, and he ate half of that. And so he had eaten four and a half one-pound steaks, which is 72 ounces. He ate a baked potato, shrimp cocktail, rolled butter, and a tossed salad. My dad said, from this day forward, anybody that can eat this meal will get it for free. And in 1960, the Big Texan 72 ounce steak challenge has started, and it hasn't changed since then. Okay, folks, so the new producer of the show is evil and uh, has booked me to do something that I swore I would never do. Uh, but I'm gonna try it because I love steak. So we're here at the Big Texan where I'm gonna go try the 72 ounce steak challenge. Somebody call the doctor. What have they gotten me into, Cal? The big man with the big cowboy hat. You must be Bob Lee. Welcome in. Glad to have you. And I hope you're hungry tonight. Well, I, I, I skipped lunch today. I'm trying to build up an appetite. I'm trying to condition myself for this thing. The 72 ounce steak challenge here at the... And I've seen this happen before. I've eaten here before. I've seen people do this thing before. But I've never been totally clear. What are the rules? How does this thing work? The rules are real simple. Once you start and accept the steak, you say it's cooked all right, it tastes all right, the contest is on you have one hour in which to eat the 72 ounce steak oh wow that's that's bigger than i remember <laughs> wait till it gets in front of you think it's big now <laughs> and you eat the shrimp cocktail with it baked potato salad and a bread piece of bread one hour and you're done with it and you win you got any tips for me on uh on how to uh conquer the steak challenge here and get it for free keep chewing keep chewing <laughs> 
Expedition Texas, presented by the city of Canton, Texas, home of world-famous First Monday Trade Days. Eastland, Texas. Find your adventure at eastlandtexas.com. And by Clifton, Texas, the Norwegian capital of Texas. See history, art, and more. Visit clifton.org for more information. What started more than a century ago as a flea market has become home to the most exciting shopping experience anywhere. First Monday Trade Days in Canton, Texas bring shoppers face to face with 7,000 vendors from all over the country selling everything imaginable. Couple that with the small town hospitality of local businesses and you have a good reason to visit every month. The market is held Thursday through Sunday, the weekend before the first Monday of every month, rain or shine. Plus, there's lots to see and do every day in Canton. Learn more at visitcantontx.com. Hi, I'm Larry Vernon, Mayor of Eastland, Texas. Eastland is a wonderful city strategically located in the heart of Texas on I-20 and Highway 6. We offer a small community feel with exceptional amenities, often found only in cities many times our size. Here you'll find shovel-ready sites for your development projects, an enthusiastic workforce, blue ribbon schools, quality health care, and a progressive, business-friendly city and state government. We welcome you to Eastland. Discover Clifton, Texas. Experience the Norwegian capital of Texas and all it has to offer. History, art, and more. While you're there, visit the Bosky Arts Center or take in a movie at the Cliff Tex Theater, the oldest continuously operating theater in Texas. The Bosky Museum, Historic Downtown, the Cultural Arts District, Antiques, and Shopping. Plan a trip and spend the day in historic Clifton, Texas. Learn more at visitclifton.org. You're watching Expedition Texas. We're in Amarillo, Texas at the Big Texan Steakhouse. The 72-ounce steak challenge is famous, as are a few of the folks who have actually taken the challenge and won. Our segment producer, Chris Moore, booked me to take the challenge, and while I'm a fan of steak, I'm certainly no competitive eater. But you have to try everything once. When I got to my table, there was already a contestant, and it looked like he was about to win. All right, Jay, uh, I don't want to mess you up on time here. You only got 23 minutes left, and it looks like you've made a really big dent in the steak there. Um, you got any tips for me on uh, on how to uh, conquer the steak challenge here and get it for free? Keep chewing. Keep chewing. <laughs> And I need to let him finish his steak because he's working on chewing right now. And if I talk to him, I'm messing up all of his chewing. So uh, we're <laughs> gonna let him keep chewing. And I think, uh, I think I see my steak on the grill back there. There was no denying that the big Texan steakhouse smelled great. And those smells were making me really hungry for a steak, but just how hungry? So I'm about to attempt the uh, free 72 ounce steak challenge, but these are the rules. And you have to sign off on the rules. And they're bringing me a pin uh, here in a minute. But uh, the entire meal must be completed in one hour. If any of the meal is not consumed and swallowed, you lose. Before the time starts, you'll be allowed to cut into the steak. Take one bite. If the steak tastes good and is cooked to your satisfaction, they'll start the time upon acceptable approval and the time does not stop. The contest is on. Make sure before you say yes that that's the way you want it. Uh, you'll be disqualified if anyone assists you in cutting, preparing, or eating of your meal. This is your contest. Once you have started, you are not allowed to stand up, leave your table, or have anyone else touch your food. Should you become ill, the contest is over, you lose. And just then, there it came. My 72 ounces of top sirloin that I had to eat in under an hour. We got it, are you ready? I'm ready, I think. I think I'm ready. There you are. Got it there for you. How's that, that look? That looks bigger than the one I saw out front. It's bigger. <laughs> Okay, salad. And you gotta eat it all, okay, okay. okay, yes ma'am. All right. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right. What do y'all think? Does it look good? good? All right, you think we can do this? Yeah, okay. There we go. That's me right there. This is the stupidest thing I've ever done. No, it's not. I'm totally outmatched here. He's not even speaking, and he's got fans.
He was he was like a pro, and I'm not I'm not feeling very confident right now. I mean, look at this. I've, I'm 12 minutes in, and this is all I've done, and I'm already starting to feel kind of satisfied. And uh, I'm not going to say full yet. Meanwhile, lots of fun was to be had elsewhere in the Big Texan. Live music in the shooting gallery. But back at the table, Chris Moore, our segment producer, came to check on me. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Uh, well, next time we're going to talk before you start booking things like this. But it's a great steak. And there's just a lot of it. Well, you told me you love steak. So I, I love sure steak. Yeah, and, and I think I'm going to be a little more careful uh, next time I tell you what, what I like. There's a lot of steak here, Chris. Well, it looks like you're enjoying it, so I'm gonna let you get back to it. Yeah, I got a lot of chewing to do here. Time passed, and even though the smells of the restaurant were amazing, somehow it didn't bother me because I had a huge steak in front of me that I was desperately trying to finish, but time was running out. Yes! Yes, I did it! Do we, do I, beat the steak. Win or do we, I beat the steak challenge. Oh, Bob, wait, I beat it. Wait a minute, Mr. Bob. You can't cheat the beef. That's not complete. Oh, man. And coming up next, we head south, way south, all the way to Galveston to explore the Bolivar Lighthouse. What is Sudden Link to go? It's TV you take with you. It's your favorite shows online. It's the biggest networks on your laptop computer. And it's free to Suddenlink customers. What's Suddenlink to go? It's the easy way to get complete watching freedom anywhere you have a Wi-Fi connection. And it's another way. Suddenlink just keeps getting better. Start streaming TV to your laptop today. In Texas, a lighthouse is a pretty rare sight. Even along the Texas coast, there are only a few. And one of the best examples of an early lighthouse is at Bolivar Point near Galveston, Texas. Port Bolivar on the Bolivar Peninsula is in eastern Galveston County. It's been the gateway to the Port of Galveston and the Port of Houston forever. And that has made it uh, significant for navigational aids and the Republic of Texas put a lighthouse here and then it was taken down during the Civil War and immediately after the Civil War they appropriated new funds and built the lighthouses here today in 1872. Mark Boyd's family has owned the property the lighthouse sits on for decades but the lighthouse isn't the only feature of this property the houses are very important to the story as well the government had a uh, had three families assigned to the light station so there was uh, a duplex for the two assistant keepers and their families and then uh, another house for the primary keeper uh, in 1900 hurricane they were heavily damaged and they repaired them fixed them back up these were structures on the ground they weren't jacked up and then the 1915 hurricane, they were even more severely damaged. And so the Coast Guard at that time uh, said, uh, you know, they wanted to build some more proper houses. And so they had this design uh, for the Gulf Coast stations and they built these houses in 1917. They will be 100 years old this fall um, and they're exact copies of the houses at the Sanibel Lighthouse in Florida. And with that rich history, Mark tells us there's an effort to restore the lighthouse and preserve it for generations to come. Well, it's a landmark for not just Bolivar, but for all of Southeast Texas and Galveston. And it's so important to the, this region that, you know, there's a lot of support for us launching this preservation effort. Well, I want to introduce folks to the lighthouse uh, in a moment. But first of all, let's start off. Uh, they're, they're a little bit newer, but by newer, I'm saying they're only a hundred years old yeah. houses. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, start off and uh, check out one of these homes. Okay, well the houses were built in 1917 by the Coast Guard. Uh, the previous houses had taken big damage in the 1915 hurricane, so they, they built some more substantial structures that have weathered many storms now. Yeah, the house really took a beating during the hurricane. Uh, it still shows a lot of damage, especially to the paint 
the, the salt water uh, was blasted into uh, every surface and uh, you know the red is faded and the, the gray is peeling and yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Well on this side of the house we have an old bell that came off of a Santa Fe locomotive that my grandpa put up here in 1948. It doesn't swing anymore in its uh, carriage but we do have a lanyard on the clapper. Now how far can that be heard? <laughs> Downwind a long way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's meant to call the kids to dinner. Really? Well, I bet that works. Yeah, that's right. You no hear the, where they are. Uh, you hear the bell works. ringing and that means dinner's ready. All right, so where we go to eat dinner? Hey Bob, so back behind the house uh, we have these brick structures. Where are these things? Well these brick structures are the bases for the water cisterns. Uh, the families here collected rainwater uh, for their, all their water use and uh, to keep the water tanks out of a storm surge from a hurricane they built them up on these brick pedestals which also gave them gravity feed into the house. This part of it really didn't serve any purpose other than just to keep the real cistern up off the ground. Right, it was a wooden tank, uh, and so this kept it up off the ground to where the water would flow into the kitchen, and uh, then it would be safe from a storm. Awesome, and any idea what this concrete is? Outhouse. Really? So there was no, no running water in the house except you know, a little bit to the kitchen. Right. And no, you know, no commode in, inside. And uh, there was a duplex, so they had to have enough for uh, two families. So this is the big two-family Yeah, well, and it would have set up a little bit. It would have been a wooden structure. We enjoyed looking around the property of Bolivar Point, but Mark knew exactly why we had come. We wanted to explore the Bolivar Lighthouse from the bottom all the way to the very top. And coming up next, that's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, wow, this is cool. Expedition Texas presented by Go Power Sports. Family fun on four wheels. Visit GoPowerSports.com. Eastland, Texas. Find your adventure at EastlandTexas.com. Clifton, Texas, the Norwegian capital of Texas. See history, art, and more at VisitClifton.org. Hi folks, Bob Malden here for Go Power Sports. Whether you're looking for an adventure on the road, off the road, or making your own road, Go Power Sports has everything you need to get rolling. My kids and I love our Trailmaster 150 XRX from Go Power Sports. And we can always keep it in top shape with their full line of parts and accessories. Visit GoPowerSports.com and be sure to follow them on Facebook. Go Power Sports, your off-road go-kart specialists. Adventures in Eastland, the home of Old Rip, the horn toad that slept in the cornerstone of the Eastland County Courthouse for 31 years. Here you'll find the Eastland Civic Center, the historic Conley Hotel, the beautiful Majestic Theater, Commemorative Parks, Inspiration Cross, and much, much more. Call 254-629-2332 or visit us eastlandtexas.com. Discover Clifton, Texas. Experience the Norwegian capital of Texas and all it has to offer. History, art, and more. While you're there, visit the Bosky Arts Center or take in a movie at the Cliff Tex Theater, the oldest continuously operating theater in Texas. The Bosky Museum, Historic Downtown, the Cultural Arts District, Antiques, and Shopping. Plan a trip and spend the day in historic Clifton, Texas. Learn more at visitclifton.org. You're watching Expedition Texas. We're at Bolivar Point near Galveston, Texas. We've explored the property of the old lighthouse there, but now it's time to head inside the lighthouse and begin our ascent to the very top. So how do you get into this thing? Well, here's the door. It's the original door. Oh, wow, this is cool. Well, let's walk around the bottom and then we can get a look at the structure. There's rooms down here on the bottom. Well, the tower is much wider at the base than it is at the top. And you'll see that when we get up there, but uh, 
there's quite a bit of room down here. Well, I'm, I'm tempted to go up those stairs here, but let's let's start off here on the lower level. And uh, I see we've got like a storage room here. Right there, there was some storage here, and I'm not really sure what they used it for, but uh, I think it goes way back. Uh, yeah. Prior to my family's occupation here. Private. Don't mess around in here. <laughs> so th this is a good look at how the brick buttresses extend from the center of the tower and tie into the iron outside. And you can see that it's all pretty in pretty good shape. I mean, those those bolts are in decent shape and the masonry uh, is in good good condition here to be 144 years old. The uh, tower was built in New York. Uh, the, all the iron was foundried there. And as part of the bid specification, they had to assemble it in place and make sure it all fit together before it was packed and shipped. So this was put together in New York then unbolted, taken down. Taken down and put on a ship to New Orleans. And then it came overland on a railroad from New Orleans. Now I know this is solid right yes we're about to go way up here that's right yeah there's a series of landings uh at increments up the tower and this is the first one and uh, when you look out the window you can see halfway up the flagpole the, the next landing will have the flag right out the window wow we have it bird proof which is kind of a joke <laughs> yeah it's kind of a joke because there's all kinds of random dead things as we go through here. Yeah, there's a, almost a complete skeleton of uh, some kind of bird that an owl uh, probably deposited here. Owl? This lighthouse is home to barn owls and sometimes pigeons. Sweet. It's like it's carpeted in poop. Yes, bird poop. Wow, this is the flag landing. And, and there's the Texas flag right out through there. <laughs> the flagpole is 40 feet tall, so we're just right there. What is this, Mark? Uh, that's a little ventilation uh, shaft. I was about eight years old. My brother was 11. We were walking up here, and a big mama owl flew out of that and attacked him. It was really, uh, oh. it was really, it was really funny. After the excitement was over, uh, yeah. and, and he wasn't physically injured. <laughs> Just some emotional scars. There were some emotional scars. We come in peace. So the safety advisory in this room are on the cone windows. Cone windows. Look at how there's no masonry around the anchor bolts. What happened? It's just weathered. Those probably weigh about 150 pounds each, and they are just sitting there. And we don't want them falling on our heads. So as you go up this ladder, be careful not to bump it with your shoulder. I'm hoping you don't bump a cone window, because I'm behind you. That would be bad. Yes, it would be bad. Uh, we don't have owls, but we have eggs. So if there's eggs, that means there's an owl mama somewhere, right? Yes, mama owl is nearby. Oh man, look at this view, Mark. Do you come up here often? I love it. I, I love coming up here, but I'm not coming up here by myself unless I have to work on the light or inspect the hatch. We got some damage to the hatch here, so. After climbing to the top of the old lighthouse, we took a moment to take in the view. And then out in Galveston Bay, we spotted an old friend from season six, the SS Selma, the concrete ship that sunk there. After a much quicker trip back down the winding staircase, Mark locked up the door and told us that there is a way now for you to help out in restoring the old lighthouse. Contact information for doing so is on the screen. There's places like this all across Texas, another lost legend waiting to be rediscovered. And on Expedition Texas, we're going to find it.